All right, YouTubes. Uh, this is my Fender Kurt Cobain Mustang that I got just the other week. Uh, as you may or may not be aware, uh, Kurt's actual Mustangs were actually the exact same as these, made in the same factory in Japan and everything as well. Uh, pretty much to the exact same spec as these. And uh, if you can search online, you'll notice that uh, interviews with Kurt's old guitar tech, where he says that basically the only modification he would do would be to lock this tailpiece here in place because Kurt hated tremolos and he never ever used it. Um, so I wanted to do the same because, again, same here, I don't like the tremolo on these things and I'm never going to use it. Uh, so I'm going to uh, hopefully walk you through how to do this and lock this tailpiece in place uh, as I couldn't find a decent video or any information really online apart from the interviews with the guitar tech. Uh, so what you're going to need to do this is obviously a Fender Mustang, preferably the Kurt Cobain one. Uh, you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver and uh, probably new strings. Uh, I'm going to use the Dario EXP. I find these things last forever and they don't cost that much more. So uh, Because uh, you're going to need new strings because of the way that Mustangs are set up. The strings come out the tailpiece from here, wrap around, and then back out. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you can see it too well, but the strings are pretty much all broken, so they're not going to be reusable at all. Uh, on top of this, uh, what to fix this issue as well, what Kurt's tech would do is he'd just flip this piece around so that the strings could go straight through instead of having to wrap around and bend and break. Uh, if you're not going to use the trim, there's no point in not flipping it around, honestly. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to uh, fast forward now, remove the strings, and uh, we'll see what we've got. Alright, so we are back. Uh, strings are now removed. And I uh, just thought I'd mention before any of uh, the YouTube haters comment on this, yes, I'm fully aware that the guitar tech used to also... Uh, cut bigger notches into the nut of Kurt Cobain's Mustangs because uh, Kurt favored, uh, I think what he was playing with was actually uh, 0.11 to 0.52 strings or something like that. Uh, you can do this too, I mean it's just plastic, just be careful. Uh, if you really want to be as authentic as possible, you can always do that, it'll handle it. I just personally really don't see the point in going with that big of a gauge even on a short scale. Uh, to me, I'm going to be sticking with, uh, what are these? These are dot .10 to dot .46, uh, just kind of like a medium gauge. Usually I use the uh, .11 to dot .50 on a longer scale guitar, and uh, if I'm going to tune all the way down to like a C or a B kind of thing, uh, on something like this that I'm going to keep tuned in B, uh, sorry, E flat. I really don't see the point in such a big gauge of strings, but you know what? Up to you guys. If you want to do that, go for it. Um, also, some interviews he said he used to have to lock the the bridge piece in place here. Uh, the re these actually have the uh, tunematic style bridge already, so that thing is not going anywhere. So there's no real need to do anything to this. It's just this tailpiece here that uh, will move. So, I mean, uh, we're just going to lock this in place. So, uh, to accomplish this, we just need to remove these, hopefully only five screws. That's all I can see for now. And we'll see what we have underneath. So, uh, be right back once I get this thing off. All right, I got the uh, five screws off. And uh, I guess I forgot to mention before, you're going to have to just take these... Uh, little, I don't know what these are actually called, but uh, what the actual tunematic bridge piece sits on, just these unscrew very easily, uh, just to get the clearance. And here we have it. You can now remove the actual vibrato tail piece. And uh, the next thing you're wanna, gonna wanna do is remove these springs from uh, the, the bridge posts, tail piece posts, sorry. And uh, we'll go from there afterwards, and uh, we'll figure out how to lock this thing in place. So, uh, see you in a few minutes, I guess. All right, uh, finally, after a lot of struggling, got that first spring off here. 
Um, just a quick tip for you guys, because it took me a while to figure this out. Uh, I'm used to just normal guitar bridges where they pretty much the uh, spring has one end that's just a hook kind of thing, and it sits in the uh, like there's a small hole on the bridge basically, and that's what gives the tension between where it's hooked and into the bridge. Uh, this thing is quite a bit different. Uh, what I think they do is they just put the spring on and then they end up bending the tip in. Uh, so what I found the easiest way to get these things off is taking a flat tip screwdriver we have here, uh, sticking it in like that and just kind of like slowly trying to unbend the tip just a little bit just so you can actually then pull it with your finger and slip it off. Uh, that seems to work best, but you know what? Whatever works for you guys, I guess, as long as you can get them off. All right, so we'll be back All a right, bit later. All right, so I've been wrestling with this thing for about an hour. Finally got the last spring off. That was a royal pain in the butt to do. Uh, I've had to deal with uh, most trem systems you can think of over the years. Uh, I've owned a lot of guitars, uh, and I've worked on a lot of guitars. Uh, everything from strats and... Uh, BC Riches with, uh, what you call it, Floyd Rose, original Floyd Rose 2, Floyd Rose Imitations I've worked with, uh, PRS Bridges even, and this, I will admit, is the biggest piece of crap I've ever had to work on. Whoever designed this, I don't know, man, just really bad design. Uh, getting the springs off is just way more hassle than it should have been. Uh, for such a simple quote-unquote design, yeah, this pain in the butt to deal with. Uh, so yeah, once you finally get the two springs off, what you're going to do is get the bigger of the two Allen keys that should have come in the uh, little plastic envelope with your Mustang. You are going to insert it into the uh, top piece here of the tube tail piece and un use that to unscrew the uh, two bridge posts. And uh, that's it for now. All right, so we're back again. Uh, I've just been to the hardware store. Uh, I'm in Canada, so Canadian Tire for me. Uh, but any decent hardware store should have what you're going to need. Uh, I read online a lot of people were saying a quarter inch washers were what you needed. Uh, luckily, the clerk was nice enough to open up the quarter inch ones. I brought in, uh, actually, I brought in the whole bridge, but all you really need to bring in would be the actual post to make sure that the washer will fit around the screw. A uh, quarter inch would not fit on no matter what we tried. Uh, we opened a few boxes and it turned out the 5 16th inch washers seem to fit pretty well. Uh, so what we're going to do is hopefully get by with just putting one on underneath and then going through the plate and back into the tube tailpiece here and hopefully that will keep it in place and stable so uh, stay tuned I'll be right back. Alright so we're done it's now locked in place uh, I know I really wanted to try and get it underneath so that it wouldn't uh, affect the look at, of the top but sadly uh, the washer then would not let the uh, tailpiece sit back into the uh, holes here so uh, I switched it around and I just put the washers on to the top part. Uh, it doesn't look too bad anyway, so and it seems to really lock it into position. And uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and put this whole thing all back together and uh, we'll see what happens. Alright, so a uh, final update here. Uh, I've gone ahead and reassembled everything, restrung and uh, we're in business. <clears throat> uh, tailpiece is not moving at all. Tuning was perfectly fine. Uh, new strings, so I mean, gonna have to stretch them out a bit, but it's actually a lot more stable and better than it was, so I'm quite happy for the, uh, like I think $2 for four washers that it cost me to do this and a bit of time and effort, so can't really complain too much. Uh, hopefully this helps someone out there that's uh, trying to do this same modification. Uh, easy enough to do, just uh, gotta wrestle with those springs a bit, but afterwards it's pretty much smooth sailing. 
So uh, feel free to leave a comment or uh, send me a message if you guys have any questions about uh, the guitar or the modification or pretty much anything else really. So uh, yeah, that's it.